Pepper Vegas, I'm with Nina, I'm Nina and your host, and of course we're down here at the Pepper Mill, which is absolutely fabulous. This place has been here since 1972, and if you really want, you know, large portions of food and great food, come to the Pepper Mill. Absolutely amazing. And I also want to mention something else. We have Patricia with us, and of course Lance, my reoccurring guest that's always here. He's always. absolutely fabulous. I love him coming on my show, because he always gives me more knowledge and more things, and we've just come up with kind of a, a fabulous idea, but it's a secret. Can't tell you yet. Priscilla doesn't realize this, but Priscilla is probably sitting where Priscilla, Elvis Presley's wife, sat. Because this was Elvis Presley's booth. So I'm quite sure many times she probably had, you know, his wife with him, who yeah. was Priscilla. So we have another Priscilla in Elvis Presley's booth. <laughs> Yay! I'm in Elvis's presence. Right now. Now. For a long time. That's why my name is Priscilla. Priscilla. That's why I go by Silla because of Elvis. Because of it, really, and I didn't know that. I was I just bringing you something extra in there, you yes. see? see? It, I all love it, all, it, all comes, it all gets together. It it? It and of course, Priscilla, Lance is in the health business, which is the cannabis. And, you know, you've got that going out Some, there. Yeah. yeah, which is obviously legal now in, in uh, well, the. the uh, in this state. In this state, it's legal. And of course, as I said last time when he was on, that you can actually get your prescription here if you have your card yeah. from any state. Any state in, in America, you can actually buy it there, which you can't in other states. You have to buy it with your own... Yeah, your reciprocity own. just varies based on state it to state. But they can bring their right. medical cards here and they can buy here with yeah. their medical cards. Yeah. So anyway, but Priscilla actually is a DJ, which is fabulous, because it's always men that are DJs, so I'm promoting us women. And you have a sturdy job at Caesars Palace. She's very well known at Caesars Palace, at Dre's. She's actually well known on the strip as a DJ. Yes, I am. How did you manage to sort of get yourself involved with it? Because it's all, it's a man's thing. It is a man's thing. You know, ever since I was a kid, I always listened to good music. I had my mother and my father and my grandmother who taught me Motown and funk and the disco. Oh, fine. And were they in the classic business? Classic rock. They were not in the business. But I always just loved the power of music and how it made me feel. Yeah. And um, I actually started my career in radio and sports broadcasting, and music was always just one of my passions, my hobbies on the side. Yeah. And um, I came to Las Vegas. I was at the Cosmopolitan for New Year's at the grand opening. I saw a female DJ and I was like, oh my Ooh, God. I can do that. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that on the side. Yeah, there and you go. so um, needless to say, Cosmo was my very first um, DJ gig here in Las Vegas. And um, it, it you know, turned no, into my career. A lot of women, you know, starting out like this, you know, don't get the Cosmo to be their first gig. How did you manage that? I mean, you really dive right in at first. I, <laughs> yeah, you which have is to, cool. <laughs> you have to believe in yourself. Yes. You have to know what you have to offer, even if it's not necessarily um, the best at your abilities at that time, but you have to know what you're capable of. Yes. And I knew that I was capable to be like the best female day DJ in Las Vegas and So you already made yourself the best before you became the best. I don't want I to say love it. I mean I I do think very highly of myself, but there's a lot of amazing female talent out there and I know a lot of them and I'm yes. great friends with them and I respect and admire them very, very much. So how did you get attached to Lance? Because I met you through Lance and of course we met, well, we met years ago. Uh, we met years ago. I through another friend who we were talking about giving back and she mentioned mentioned Lance, how amazing he is and well, kind of so does. you've involved with this because Lance, you are now involved with a lot of foundations yes. yeah. in the city, and, and, and I know that Vegas is kind of surrounded by giving back and helping the foundations here. Yeah. And I know some people are a little bit reluctant to give to foundations, wondering, you know, where is the money really going? Because um, I, I had a foundation of my own. I've been involved in many foundations, especially in Los Angeles, and now here I'm getting involved with you. But how do people um, recognize that, that their money is really going to where it needs to go to? As of a, I, I, know, I know if I go through you, you know, I'm safe. I think one thing is this, is that, you know, support local charities. A lot yes. of times people will recognize a name and they'll give to a national charity. And there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times when you give nationally, it's going to their ad campaign. Yes. And so people can physically see the change a local charity makes. And normally these are smaller to mid-sized charities. Yes. So to see this firsthand, people actually see the change rather than saying, well, I'm giving money, who cares? But when you're actually involved, and that's the key thing, being yes. involved and being engaged, yes. rather than just saying, well, I'm going to give money, who cares? 
Yeah, and I don't think, and that's what I don't like. You know, no. Giovanni, and you know, I've done my bit, and that's it, and it doesn't matter what happens to it. And my, my greatest thing here is that I always say this on the, especially when you come on, we have got 16,000 homeless children in Las Vegas, and I keep saying that because need, they need help. Yeah. And do you get do you reach any of these kids? Absolutely, we do. I mean, we do programs for kids. I mean, our programs are constantly expanding. Right now, we have a new uh, Vargas Compassion Fund, which was started for diabetic awareness. Uh, it was actually started by a young woman who lost her fiance to diabetes. And a lot of times, people don't realize the severity of some of these illnesses because we hear it so often. We're like, oh, it's just high blood sugar, yes. not realizing people die from it. They're not don't have access to good medical attention. Uh, the other thing is that we do uh, care packs for yes. the homeless. Yes. So we actually go around town, you know, supply them with toothbrush, deodorant, and just on our own. And we're not looking for accolade. We're putting it out there and giving it. So, so. just automatically doing it without having a, a big uh, affair or a big no. something going on. Or no. and you can make, and you can make little change. You know, if people are out there. They want to know how we can change stuff. It's like you can change stuff as an individual. Yes. Rather than waiting on something else to change. Yeah, well, or wait on somebody can, else to do something, and then you can follow through with yeah. that. And the same as that's how you think, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You you, you march into it. Absolutely, head first. I mean, my, um, I do a lot with the homeless. I do a lot with the uh, Be Brave campaigns. I mean, uh, anti-bullying campaigns. I'm yes. involved with, um, it's called Be Brave campaign. And we go around to high schools, middle schools, elementary schools. We hold assemblies, a DJ. We really encourage the kids to um, <laughs> to love and support each other and not make fun. And it I really that's, makes I think that's, that's a big thing, is, is, is try to teach them not to make fun of somebody else when they have whatever they have making fun of whether yeah. they're short or fat or whatever the case may be they should not do that they should sort of really maybe talk to them and teaching empathy and teaching yes. and, and compassion and, and it's yeah. so much better to be friendly and to be nice than it is to be arguing and bullying everybody it, it made me cry the first time I went to one of these events because you really see the difference and the prince it starts with the teachers and the principals implementing these programs that are not funded by the government yet, but should be. Yeah. And so we try to well, raise yeah, I, I, I am awareness. actually going to disagree with you about the government okay. having to pay for everything. Because you're when right. You, when, because when the government yes. pays, you have to go by their rules, because I know how their rules are, mm -hmm. and they're pretty strict rules. But at the same time, I think, rather than going through the government, let's just personally do it ourselves, like you said. Let's just go out there and do this ourselves and, 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 and see the difference we can. We can make a difference. We don't need a whole group of people. Right. We don't need a lot of people to make a difference, to, especially to help the young children. It seems, um, I'm not going to say there's more homeless children in Vegas, but there are a lot because the way of life here is a little different. Yeah. And would you agree with yes, that? Yes, I think it's, it's a lot more noticeable out here and that's the thing is that people, you know, again, these are people. You yes. just drive past, like whatever. It's like you're forgetting this is another human being that needs help. Yes. And whatever the situation is that got him into that position, rather than judging that, it's like looking at a child who's drowning. Yes. Are you going to save the child? You're going to condemn it for not knowing how to swim. Yeah. Well, you better right. You want to offer. First, you want to offer, <laughs> offer. You want to offer help. So of it's the course. same thing. It's exactly the same thing. As when we see these people on the corner and everything, and sort of, it's so funny you say that because I was giving some money to a woman. She was in a wheelchair, and I'm at this traffic light, and I'm thinking, have I got time to get out of the car? Give them some money and get back in the car. Yeah. And then I. I thought to myself, I really don't need to worry about that. Let's just get out of the car and give what you want to give and get back to you. They have to wait and they have to wait. And so I took it on myself to make that change and it was, it was pretty, pretty cool. Now, with you, you do a lot of cannabis. Um, I do a lot of cannabis. Yeah, no, not you plus me. <laughs> <laughs> that came out really cool. Right. It? <laughs> you do a lot of cannabis. No, but you're in that arena of the of the yes. health side of, yeah. of cannabis. And have you seen a big difference since they made it legal in, in, in Vegas? And sort of I think a lot more people are opening their eyes. They're, they're, they're noticing there's a movement that's happening. I find with that, as there's more information, there's a lot more misinformation. So my goal is to kind of help educate people on the truths of it. Yes. Because there's a lot of fallacies. I mean, for years, people know the propagation of it's completely, let's use it to get high, yes. the stoner mentality, or it does nothing. And yeah. these are two extreme views, in which Absolutely. case... Absolutely. So I know that you're the one out there promoting it, Lance, to make sure people understand what, you know, that... that what well, the medical, the medical the benefits. Medical, yeah, the medical benefits of taking that, which means it doesn't go directly to anything within your body. It goes through your whole body. Well, it stimulates your endocannabinoid system. So, oh, ooh, I like that's, that. a, that's a fun <laughs> word for you. Yeah, I get some words out of him. You know. And of course that helps, but, but it also can cure things you don't even know what's wrong with you. Yep. 
I mean, that, that system is creating balance yes. by stimulating that system, which is funny. God put the system there, plant matter stimulates that system. How weird. And so what happens is that system's in charge of homeostasis, balance within the body, that which is cool. why people see a myriad of effects of it, why it's helping cancer, AIDS, epilepsy, everything. autism. Yes, it, it sort of goes to everything. It's like a computer. You know when you have a computer and you clean it, you know, you have a have it cleaned every so often and you do it's the same as camera. Correct. You take that and it like cleans your system. Yes. And it cleans your brain and sort of everything like that. We're going to get back to you now. And what I want to find out, I want to find out what is your gimmick? When you go up there, you, you cannot just put records on. You, you have to sort of rather have a show going. So is this a, it's a, a Priscilla show. What, what do you do? Um, to be honest with you, I've branded myself as the female that wears the eye patch. I have it in my purse over there. <laughs> I'll bring it out. Um, I have this fancy eye patch. And it kind of just... I like to create a persona, I like to have a personality, not just being in Vegas, I've always been an entertainer. Yeah. Um, something different? Yes, something different. I just like to have fun with it. I don't take it too seriously. You know, you can only see so many DJs with a backwards hat on, yeah. you know, yeah. and um, I like to be more fa high fashion. Granted, I wear a backwards hat every day, yeah. but I like to be more um, fashionable and you want people to no notice you more. They do. Yes. I, when I wear my eye patches. So, do like, you have a big following? Uh, it's getting bigger every single day. Oh, um, I I like to promote myself with class. I mean, a lot of female DJs. Some take advantage of you know the power of the female and sexiness and you know I feel like well, I'm sexy be, without having to it doesn't showcase always, you don't always my have assets. to show yeah your assets which we know what they all are but you don't a woman doesn't always have to do that does she I mean a man doesn't do that no he doesn't do you know that. he doesn't so what and a woman and especially in Vegas they're always showing their body off and have the lowest dress they can wear and the boobs hanging up and everything, which I think is nice but sometimes I think I think men also sort of, sort of like the mystique of it sometimes yes you know I think sometimes a little sort of hidden part is like you know what's going on there they like to have that intrigue yeah. and that'll be the first thing that someone sees but then they actually see talent that's yes. the key thing when you're not just you know basing it on well look this is how I'm dressed but yeah but can you spin yeah that's the key that's, can you that's do not, the rest of it let's not make it a compensation thing where I can't do this so look at this but if you can do that where people actually can see the talent I mean that's why I say the Priscilla stands out yes. that and all the work that she does with charities which is when you see people in a job which is like well what does a DJ do and it's like well this is what you're not seeing what she's doing on the side that's right all the other stuff yes and I think it's sort of you know to be all rounded in any, especially in entertainment because in, in, in the entertainment business you're always going to be criticized whether it's good or bad yeah. so there's going to be that but oh she's awful oh, she's great no oh, she's this and she's got the wrong looks to on she should have this on her. you know <laughs> these are your eyebrows are up her eyebrows are down you're, <laughs> truly you think I'm joking this is what goes on that's why I'm wearing a hat <laughs> to cover my eyebrows <laughs> I don't have good eyebrows. Uh, if anybody wants to book you, how can they book you? They can book me um, through, uh, honestly, I, we live in a social media world through Instagram at Silla the Thrilla, S I L L A T H E. Thrilla, T H R I L L A. I'm just going to do my email address. So Silla the Thrilla on everything Facebook. Um, Instagram, everything. Social media. Social media. That's what it is. Social media across the board. Lance, Absolutely. how can everybody get hold of you for, for the next thing? Reason. You can actually come to our dinner. Yeah. Oh, when well, is oh, it? What? Oh, we don't got tell anyone about that. No, February, <laughs> February 11th, we're doing a fundraiser for patients that need access to medicine as well as animals because we work with the whole community. Uh, it's going to be at Rendezvous Wine and Dine. You can buy tickets still online until this Friday. So it's at seven, and you can watch. This the one, 80s. She'll 80s be doing, party. we're doing an 80s party there. An 80s so she's party be as well. Actually, rendezvous, rendezvous is a fabulous place. I was there a couple of times before and we did a couple of films. Yeah, we've been yeah, up we're there. All, we're, yeah, all we're, over the we're, place. Over, we're everywhere. Vegas Live with Nina. We'll be right back. Thank you, Lance. Thank, Thank you, Priscilla. We'll be back.